morning? Let's do it. Are you ready? If my ushers will come. God loves a cheerful giver. So we're going to be cheerful and we're going to give. Can we do that? Father, this morning as we take our tithe and, and we bring our offering this morning, we say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to give. And I pray, God, in Jesus' name that you'll bless it good. Press it down. Shake it together. Run it over, God, just as you promised in your word. And God will be quick to give you thanks in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. Bless you as you give this morning. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for being faithful. If you have your Bible, turn with me to John chapter 16. Yeah, that's on page 12. It's on page 1606. While you're turning there, I have a special request uh, for prayer. When, when, when you do this long enough, you begin to see patterns. Somebody say patterns. You see patterns in Christianity. And the pattern that I have seen in Christianity in our city for over 25 years, and if you've been in this city for any length of time and you have eyes to see, you'll see it. When a new pastor comes in to town or a new church starts in town, that's the shiny, that's the shiny coin, that's the shiny thing that is all the buzz. And 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 everybody wants to go check out the shiny new coin and the new buzz in town because there might be something different. And and I remember 12, almost 13 years ago, 12 years ago. I, Diane, was the hot buzz in town. And, and when it was recorded that, that I was taking over for Pastor Schreffler, the pastor who had been here for 25 years, the very next weekend, this house was packed full of people. It was packed full of people because everybody wanted to see what the new pastor had to bring to town. Even though I was not a new pastor, I had been here as the associate pastor, as the youth pastor, as the chief toilet bowl cleaner, as the chief weed pooler, come on somebody, as the chief landscape artist, I would call myself. <clears throat> and, and, and pretty soon when you started preaching on topics that wasn't, it's the word of God and it's the truth. Have you ever seen that, heard that movie, you know, <laughs> You can't handle the truth. <laughs> well, people can't handle the and, and so I've noticed other churches have come into town with new pastors and woo, it's the shiny new thing. And then you'll see it begin to wear. And what we are experiencing, even in our church, is there are shiny new things taking place in the land of Christianity in our city. And people are going to check out the new shiny thing. You hear things like, I don't get fed any longer. Can I just address that for just one second this morning? If you, if you are coming to this church just on Sunday mornings for me to spoon feed you Christianity, you are malnourished and you're starving yourself to death. If this is the only type of nourishment that you get, oh my God, you, you, if, if you only ate physically once a week, you'd die. And then you'd be as skinny as Tiffany. I just don't feel like I'm getting fed anymore. Well, what if you, and I'm not mad at nobody, but but I have to ask the question, what are you bringing to the 
shouldn't you be bringing your praise and bringing your worship and bringing your offering and, and bringing your hungry self to sit at the table? And you should be able to, we should, we, 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 not you, we, us. We should be able to learn in whatever environment we're in. Even if the shine has kind of worn off some. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to be in the place where God wants me to be. I don't want to be, and I don't want to be one of those people who are constantly looking for the next new shiny thing in Christianity because there's lots of shine, but when you, upon closer examination, you'll find out that that 18 karat, really ain't 18 karat, it's 18 karat gold plate over sterling silver. And it'll turn your, oh mm, God, you just gotta, I guess what I'm saying is we really need to pray and say, God, what, what's my role? Where's my, where's my place? And, and sometimes, I saw something on Facebook the other day, sometimes every now and then something on Facebook probably will minister to me, believe it or not. And it was a picture of a cruise ship and it said, it's too bad that our churches have become more like cruise ships instead of warships. Our churches have become, has become cruise ships instead of warships, instead of battleships. No wonder why we're in the pickle that we're in. No wonder why the government can look at us and say, shut your doors, and we go, <laughs> okay. And we close our doors because we have no teeth any longer in our communities. Because, because we're too busy running to the next shiny thing. We're too busy running, we're too busy, we're too busy worried about getting our feelings hurt. And so we'd rather have somebody with itching ears tell us what we want to hear instead of what we need to hear. When I don't know about you, but I look at scripture and I'm I get offended a lot by scripture. And there's things that I wish I could just pluck out of that place. But I just, but I just can't. There's some things that there's some things that God's doing in me that's uncomfortable. And 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 but people people don't get that as long as they're as long as they're as long as they're they've got run in them. Hear me. As long as they've got run in them, they'll never they'll never mature. They'll be surface Christians. They'll be Christians on the outside, but upon closer examination, oh fig tree, I see leaves but no fruit. And so, unfortunately, God forgive us, we're creating a culture of leaves but no fruit. That's why we're in the mess that we're in. Because we don't stay long enough to get disciplined. We don't stay long enough we don't stay long enough for someone to tell you no. Because the first time somebody tells you no, or the first time somebody says, we're not going to do it like that, you get up and run to the next. I had a guy come here while back. He said, Pastor, he met me at the front doors. And he said, he said, Pastor, I've been to every church in town. And I go, well, you're not going to probably be here very long. And he goes, no, 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 I've heard great things about you. I've heard you're a great pastor. You're a, you're a great preacher. I'm like, okay. But if you found fault in the other 85 churches in town, what make Because I'm a man too, and I put my pants on one leg at a time just like you do, boo. So we just, I guess we just need to find our place and stay put. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but we just need to stay put. And, and 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 allow God to work out the well I don't like that we're just doing video I don't either but until we get it fixed we're gonna worship on video you know well they don't have an awesome kids ministry we're we're working on it we're pushing we're striving we're praying we're fasting we're believing God but until then Oh, I want to be around people who I want to be around people who 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 are willing to stick it, stay, stay in the boat, and go. I'll wrestle with you. I'll, I'll I'll fight it out a little bit. 
I'll, I'll, I'll fight a little bit. I, I know it's a little uncomfortable right now, but I'm willing to be uncomfortable because Christianity is not about my comfortability as much as it is about my availability. And, and, and I'm available for what God wants to do. And if he wants to do it on a screen or do it on a... The Lord have your way. I just needed to get that out of me. Are you in Bible? Are you in your Bible? Are you in John chapter 16? Are you in verse 33? John chapter 16, verse 33. These things, this is Jesus speaking, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I like this in the Amplified Version. It says, I've told you these things, that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you'll have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. So I, I begin to look up this week as I begin to study this. I begin to look up peace. And peace is found 397 times in the Bible in 369 verses. Do you think that he might have been trying to get a message to us about peace? Peace is defined like this. It's exemption from rage or havoc of war. It's harmony. It's security, it's safety, it's prosperity, it's felicity. Because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous. It's a tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot, whatsoever sort that is. So the opposite. So whenever I look up a word in, in the dictionary, I like to look up the the, the, the synonyms, the synonyms, are, and sometimes I like to look up the antonyms, the, the synonyms, the things that are similar, the, the antonyms, the things that are dissimilar. And, and if you look up that word peace in, in the, the source, it's discord. An antonym of, of, or the opposite of peace is discord. It's distress. It's fighting. It's frustration. It's upset. It's war. It's worry. It's disharmony. And so he's saying, listen, in, 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 in these things that you may have peace, you may have harmony. In a world that is filled with not a whole lot of peace. But I will tell you this. The world didn't give me my peace and the world cannot take my peace away. And, and we have to look at this is the opposite of peace is discord and distress and fighting and frustrated. You want to find someone who's not at peace? You'll find some you want to find somebody like that? You'll find someone who's frustrated, who's always worrying about stuff. My my I'm gonna talk about it because she's not here, she's gonna watch me. But my mother, for years growing up, she she she'd call me and she'd check on me and, and she said, Well, well, I just wanted to call you and check on you. No, I'm, I'm not telling you where I'm at because you'll just worry. And my, mom's, my mom would always say, well, that's my job. It's my job as a mother is to worry about her kids. No, you leave me in the hands of God. And you trust, you trust that how you raised me. <clears throat> Can I tell you a secret? I don't worry about my children going to school. I don't. I don't worry about my kids going to school. I rest in the fact how I raise them. And then when they need that teaching, it will rise up in them and they'll do what they're supposed to do. Because what good is it going to do for me to, to wring my hands and worry? No, I just have to rest on my parenting skills and the God who is in me and the God who's in them that they'll do the right thing. Because it's not going to do me any good to bite my nails and, and pace the floor while they're gone. I have to trust. Come on. We have to learn how to trust them or we will be a worry wart. And worrying 
and, and anxiety and frustration, it will kill you. Stress will kill you. It will kill you. And, and besides, I found out most of the things that I worry about never come to pass. Waste all that time, right, Diane? All the time and all the energy and all the, all the, well, what if this happens? And what if, well, if it does, then I'll deal with it as it comes. I almost feel like there's been a spirit of fear that has been released on our nation. That, that, that if, if I can get you fearful, if I can get you, because if, 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 if people can, can control you by fear, They'll have your peace. And if you're not in peace, you'll make wrong decisions. You'll make poor decisions. They say after a major loss, after you lose someone, like if you lose a spouse or something, not to make a decision for at least a year, preferably two years, before you make any decisions. Because your decision-making skills will be altered because of the stress you're under and the lack of peace you are having in your life. So, so why if we're, if we're under, if we're under all this stress and fighting and frustration and upset and war and worry and disharmony, why would we ever make an important decision? Why? You're setting yourself up for failure then. If you, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's saying, listen, I pray that the God of all hope would fill you with joy and peace. And so then that means he can, we can be filled with joy and peace then, even in the midst of struggle. Even in the midst of conflict, even in the midst, even in the midst of COVID-19 or COVID-20 or COVID-21 or COVID-22 or COVID-20. No matter what it is, we should be able to live. Because I don't think he wrote this and he was like, oh, I don't think Paul, when he wrote this, was going, oh, I wonder if they're going to read this in 2021. And if they read this, I wonder. Maybe we should take that out, Holy Spirit, because. No. But I believe that in the midst of issues, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of pain, we can still be people of peace. We can still be people that aren't fighting, that aren't frustrated, that aren't. And it's easy. Oh, my God, it's so easy to get frustrated. This week I had to turn off the TV. And I'm a news junkie, and I love the news. And I, but. But this last, oh, oh my goodness, because I started thinking stuff that I shouldn't be thinking while I'm watching the news and sort of what? Just shut it off. And so we started watching on Netflix. I think it's Netflix. We started watching um, um, Family Reunion. It's a it's a funny comedy show with Tia Mori in it, and. And, and it's just a, it's just a real, there's no cussing, there's no sex, there's no, it's wonderful, it's rare, it's wonderful, and, and, and so we're, we've been searching for good stuff to watch on TV, and then we started watching this, there was another show that was a Latino family um, on Netflix, and it was like, one day at a time, or once upon a time, or, so, and, and and so we watched the first episode and we were like, ah, oh, praise God, it's 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 a good, clean, wholesome, it's a it's a single, it's a single Latina girl uh, raising her children and her mom's living there at home and, and and oh it's so nice and it's so so and there was no cussing in it, there was no sexual innuendos in there, there was no there was no there was no they weren't wearing masks on the TV show. And and it was so wonderful. And then we watched episode one and we're like, whoo, we found us a good, and it had three seasons. And so we thought, well, we'll just every evening while we're eating dinner, we'll just watch these shows, you know. And then, and then second episode was good. And then third episode started getting into the immigration issues and the politics of, of, 
open borders and immigration and things like that. And we were like, oh. And then, and then the, the fourth or fifth episode started talking about sexuality of the daughter. And now the daughter has come out that she's a lesbian and, 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 and her mom and her grandma and her, and the brothers and sisters and the neighbor next door, they're all for her and they're woohoo pro gay now. And, and, and they're, and, and so it's just these agendas that they keep. You know, the, the first episode was good, and the second episode was good, and the third ep and then it started, then it started, oh, here comes immigration issues, and, and up, here comes, here comes the homosexual, LGBTQ, RST, I don't know, it sounds like I'm ordering a sandwich. I'll take the LGBTQ sandwich, please, with extra mustard, you know what I mean? I'm like, what? But, but then, and then, and so we're like, ugh. Well, let's watch the fourth episode. Maybe they got it out of their system. It gets worse. And so we said, squash that one. And now we're on, now we're on this next one and we're, we're hoping that it's, but we don't have a whole lot of faith in it either. I can't. And, and so, you know what we, you know, we have been watching Karen that we, that we do enjoy. We haven't watched it for a little while because we ran out of episodes. Is the Andy Griffith show? <laughs> Anybody remember the Andy? I love Lucy. We've been watching I Love Lucy. It was hilarious. So about six months ago, my boys and I were laying in the bed on a Sunday afternoon after church, and, and I flipped it on the Andy Griffith show, and the boys are going, they're looking at me, and they're like, "Dad, give me the remote." And so I threw the remote at him, and he goes, "What's wrong with the TV?" What do you mean what's wrong with the TV? He goes, it's just gray. And I said, you mean black and white? He goes, yeah, what's wrong with it? I'm like, son, it was it was made in black and white, and that's how, well, that's dumb. But my boys love the Andy Griffith show. They love I Love Lucy. They think it's hilarious. That they that they that they had separate beds. Here, Lucy and Ricky are expecting, having, getting ready to have little Ricky, and there's two beds with a, with a stand and a lamp in the middle between the two beds. They're not even, how did that happen? But, but it's so wholesome, and you don't have to worry about having to explain things to your children. I have to explain things to my children because they don't understand the culture of that time in the 50s and 60s. But... But I don't have to. I don't have to have that awkward conversation. Like, well, that means, son, that it can be peaceful. That I'm not going to have to worry about. Come on, Colossians chapter thirteen, verse eleven. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Here it is. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be complete. In other words, lack nothing. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. So if he's telling us to live in peace, then it must be possible to live in peace. Because how, how sick would that be of God to try to tell us to live a certain way that we could not live? He's giving us a goal to attain, and if we can't attain it, that would be sick of him. And the God of love and peace will be with you. How important is that? Finally, brethren, I'm going to read it again. Farewell. Be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Watch. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. Verse 15, Colossians 3, 15. I love this verse. 
Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. How do I allow, that sounds good, that sounds good, that sounds, that sounds good Christianity, that sounds good Christian lingo, right Tiff? It, it sounds great, but how do, we, how do we let the peace of God rule in our hearts? We have to be careful what we put in our eye gate and our ear gate and what comes out of our... So I'm going to be careful with what I put in because garbage in, garbage out. And, and if, if I'm constantly feeding myself the news, I, I love hearing positive stories. I love hearing happy endings. I love... And you're not going to find those on the news. In fact, I was putting on my socks this morning and I had the news on because I'm a news junkie. Which I shouldn't have done. That, that right? That, that uh, talking about the war in Kabul, Afghanistan. That we just spent $700 million building this, Af this United States embassy in Afghanistan and now... We are sending helicopters in and the military in to, to retrieve our ambassadors from Kabul. And that whole region has now gone back to the Taliban. And we're in a pickle there. And I just thought, there's so many things that's vying for our attention today. And, and if we're not careful, social media, social media can be a wonderful thing. It could also be a killer. It can, it can also be, I, I, if I didn't have to have one for church, I probably wouldn't have one social media. But I reach thousands of people on social media every single week. I'll, I'll put a little tweet out and I'll have 500 people. I'll put an Instagram out and have 20,000 people on my Instagram. I, I, I published a video this morning at 10 o'clock, Barbara preaching a few weeks ago. And, and, and by Wednesday, there'll be 5,000 people that will view that video. Kind of important for us to, our message is getting out. But, but, but the things that you, that you see when you're scrolling has a way of getting in your heart and you have a way of losing peace. When, when that phone number comes up with the person who always just wants to talk bad, never has nothing good to say, never has nothing affirming to say, never has anything positive to say, is always the one, is the Debbie Downer one. Come on. Instead, you know what? Go to voicemail. Because I don't have time for your... Tell me something that's going good. How are you? Ugh, I had a horrible week. So, something had to be good. Something. 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 Tell me something. Tell me something good. If I said, "Tell me, tell me five things that happened good, and tell me five things that happened bad," you could rattle off the bad things a lot quicker than you could the good things. Tiffany, tell me a good thing. And you didn't have to cook, huh? <laughs> Debbie, tell me something good. Kyle, tell me something good. Darlene. Yes. Adriana. Hermana. Tell me something good. See? We, we need to celebrate the things that are going good in our lives. I have something good. Today's Greta's 49th birthday. <laughs> Nick's, yeah, we'll get her. She's not in here, but we'll get her. She's, she's teaching kids this morning. She's teaching the kids this morning. We should bring her in and sing her happy birthday. But you, but you look at this and you're like, I think we need a different perspective. 
you know what? I, I, I may not be rich, but, but all my bills are paid. Right, Darlene? All my bills are paid. All my bills are paid. You know, we may not have a, a completely full building this morning, but all of our bills are paid. And, and people are still getting saved. People's lives are being changed. We, oh, we can, we can, we can look at the, we don't have this, we don't have that. But look at the things we do have. Look at the, go home and, go home and look in your cupboard and go, thank you, Lord, I got food. I got food, I got more food than I know what to do with. Ugh. I got more, I got more food than I know what to do with. I'm going to go out to my truck and it's got, I think it still does, it did when I got here. It has tires on it. And, and it has three quarters of a tank of gas in it. Praise wow. Jesus at $9 a gallon. But, but I think we need to change perspective. Watch this. In 1555. Dr. Nicholas Ridley was sentenced to be burned at the stake in England because of his witness for Jesus. On the night before Ridley's execution, his brother offered to remain with him in the prison chamber to be as of assistance to him and comfort to him. Nicholas Ridley declined the offer and he said this, I intend, God willing, to go to bed and sleep as quietly tonight as I ever did. Knowing the next day that he would be burned at the stake. Because he knew the peace of God, he could rest in the strength of the everlasting arms of his Lord to meet his need. Most of us will never face a trial of faith that's quite that severe. Yet all of us go through difficult times. And during those times we have the opportunity to fix our minds on God and receive his peace. Watch this. And as they took him out of that prison cell to be burned at the stake, he screamed out these words. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you, trust in the Lord forever, for in Jehovah the Lord is everlasting strength. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And then they, then they poured... Then they poured oil on him and they, they tied him to a stake and they burned him in the city square. And he's quoting scripture. You'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Oh God, give us that kind of a... Give us that... Surely, I doubt that any of us are going to have that to go through in our lives. But we have things to go through in our lives and so no matter what we go through in our lives, could we be the one whose Lord, blessed are the ones whose mind is stayed on you. You'll keep him in perfect peace. So no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, no matter the hardships, no matter the difficulties, I'm going to remember you're going to keep me in perfect peace. Why? Because my mind is stayed on you. Not on the situation, not on the problem, not on the difficulty, but my mind is stayed on you the author and the finisher of my faith. Father, I love you today. And I thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace. And oh God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would give us your peace. Not as the world gives, but the peace that you give, God. Those 369 verses, Lord, let us apply those to our hearts. The scriptures of peace. And Lord, let us... Walk in peace. Let us be in peace. Let us, let us go to bed tonight in peace. Let us wake up in the morning, God, in peace. And let us, God, one more thing. Let us be protectors of our peace. Let us, God, be protectors of our peace. And we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe you're here, maybe you're watching you would say, Pastor, this morning I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to surrender my life to Him. And I need the peace that God gives. If that's you, would you just pop up your hand right where you are this morning? I want to pray for you.
this is what I want you to do. Would you just repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me. And forgive me of my sin and wash me clean. And help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen.